jeder weiß. Wie alle wussten. Wie alle wissen. Welcome to part 2 of the Eve University AVL class, Combat Mechanics 101. I'm your instructor, Turhan Bey. Now that we've discussed the different ship and positional attributes, let's take a look at the attributes for the different weapon systems and how these values relate to one another. When we refer to weapon systems in EVE Online, we mean those modules that deal damage to other ships. All of the current weapon systems can be divided into five categories. Missile launchers, turrets, drones, AE weapons or area effect weapons such as smart bombs, and DE weapons, or direct effect weapons, doomsdays. First, let's discuss missile launchers. This category includes everything from rockets to citadel torpedoes. They all share the same mechanics. To find the attributes that we're interested in, we have to get info on the ammunition, and not the missile launcher itself. Let's take a look at your average Scourge heavy missile. The first two attributes we'll investigate are max flight time and max velocity. These are pretty self-explanatory the amount of time that the missile will fly, and the speed that it travels. If we multiply these together, we get the maximum distance that the missile will travel, or its range. These values may be further modified by your skills, specifically missile bombardment and missile projection. As long as your target is within this range, which means the target's distance is the same or lesser, then your missile will hit it. One little caveat with missile range is that you should subtract about 10% from the final value to get its effective range. It's unclear if this is because missiles have an acceleration period, or because of their arcing paths, or just a glitch in the game timing. But be sure to subtract this, or you may not get close enough to your targets to hit them. Missiles also have an explosion velocity. This is supposedly the speed of the missile's explosion, and yes, it can be much slower than its max velocity that we saw earlier. This value is calculated against your target's velocity, which modifies the amount of damage that you do. This means that the faster your target is moving, the less damage your missile will do to it. But the faster your missile's explosion velocity, the lesser the mitigating effect of your target's speed. In general, you don't usually need to know the exact value of your missile's explosion velocity. You just need to remember that smaller missiles, such as light missiles and rockets, will have a faster explosion velocity. Very large missiles, especially torpedoes and citadel torpedoes, have a slower explosion velocity and so, much more of their potential damage will be lost against very fast targets. The final missile attribute is Explosion Radius, which is compared against the target's signature radius. The explosion radius is the size of the missile's explosion, so common sense may lead you to believe that the bigger the value, the better, but this isn't the case. It's better to think of the explosion radius as how attenuated or diluted the missile's damage will be. If a missile with a very large explosion radius were to hit a ship with a very small signature radius, then most of the missile's damage will be lost. The target ship will only take a small fraction of the missile's total potential damage. This means that, when attacking small ships, then a smaller explosion radius is better. Firing a torpedo at a frigate, for example, will not obliterate that frigate because the torpedo's explosion radius is too large compared to the frigate's signature radius. You'd be better off using light missiles. Now let's investigate another category of weapons, turrets. This includes all laser, projectile, and hybrid weapon systems in the game, in both their long and short range variants. They all share the same mechanics. Unlike missiles, to see the attributes in which we are interested, we have to get info on the turret and not the ammunition. The first attributes that we'll investigate are optimal range and accuracy falloff. These values indicate the weapon's range, or, more specifically, how much of your weapon's damage may be applied based on your target's distance. With all other variables being equal, your turrets will deal 100% of their damage at up to the optimal range shown. Beyond that distance, the damage will start to drop, not linearly, but on a curve. At a distance of your optimal range plus your accuracy falloff, your turrets will deal only 50% of their damage. At a distance of your optimal range plus twice your accuracy falloff, your turrets will only deal about 6% of their damage, which, when all other combat mechanics and calculations are taken into account, 
It's about as far as you'll probably ever want to bother shooting. For most turret weapons, this means that you'll want to fight as close to your optimal range as possible. This will ensure that your damage won't drop due to your shooting beyond optimal range, but that your target will be far enough away that your guns won't lose track of it. We'll discuss tracking in more detail later. There are a few turrets whose optimal range is just too small that fighting at this range is just not the best tactic. Autocannons, for example, are very well known for this. They have a very small optimal range, but a very large accuracy falloff. If you've hit a weapon like this, then you'll want to fight at perhaps 30 to 70 percent of your falloff range to get the most out of your weapon. This is called fighting and falloff. Another important aspect of turret range is that it's affected by different types of ammunition. All turrets have eight types of basic ammo that you could choose from, and the ammo that you choose will modify the range of your turrets. You can see the range bonus of any ammunition in its attributes tab of its get info window. In general, close range ammo, the type that has a negative range bonus, will deal more damage, but you will need to get closer to your target. Long range ammo with a positive range bonus will allow you to attack at a greater distance, but it will deal less damage overall. Another attribute that all turrets share is Signature Resolution, or SIGRES. This is akin to a missile's explosion radius that we discussed earlier. And just like the explosion radius, you don't usually need to worry about the exact value of a turret's signature resolution. Just remember that smaller turrets have a smaller SIG res, and larger turrets have a larger SIG res. The SIG res is matched against the target's signature radius, and so just like with missiles, a large turret with a large SIG res may do a whole ton of damage, but if it fires upon a small ship with a small SIG radius, then that ship will only take a small portion of that total damage. When combined with other factors, it may not even be enough to destroy that ship. Finally, turrets have a tracking speed attribute. It's shown in the Get Info window as tracking speed slash accuracy, and it's measured in radians per second. This is how well a turret can track a target as it moves across its field of fire. You can think of it as how fast a turret can turn to keep itself aimed at a moving target. Common sense may lead you to believe that there are only two possibilities. Either the turret can keep track of a target, or it can't. But this isn't the case. It's best to think of it this way. If a target has any transverse or side-to-side -side motion at all, then your turret will be less accurate and it'll deal less damage. If this transverse motion is very small, then you'll still deal most of your damage. But as your target's angular velocity gets close to and surpasses your turret's tracking speed, then your turret's accuracy will drop by a huge amount. You'll deal very little damage, or you'll miss it completely. So think of it as a wall, or limit, that you want to try and not let your target go past. And of course, the greater your turret's tracking speed, then the easier it is to not let your target go past it. As a general rule, smaller turrets will have a faster tracking speed than larger turrets. This lets them more easily track other small ships, as they and your own ship dart around. But this also means that large turrets will have a much slower tracking speed and will have a very hard time tracking small ships as long as those small ships keep their angular velocity high. Another general rule is that the long-range turrets have much worse tracking than the short-range turrets. All turret types have a long-range and short-range type. Remember what I said in part one about the rat values? It's the angular velocity that you want to get as low as possible in order to hit your target and hit them hard. Optimally, you want your target's angular velocity at zero, which means that, relative to your own ship, he's either moving directly towards you or directly away from you, or of course, if he's a total noob, he's just sitting completely still. As we mentioned earlier, tracking speed is measured in radians per second. This seems confusing to some players because they're so accustomed to measuring angles and degrees. But radians is actually a perfect measurement because you can easily see the limit of your target's transversal velocity at a given range. Um, what? Okay, let's look at an example. Imagine that you're using some turrets and ammo that give you a 12 kilometer optimal range and your tracking speed is 0.03438 radians per second. So, just multiply 12,000 meters by 0.03438 radians, and you get 412.56 meters per second. 
That is the transversal velocity where your target breaks the limit of your tracking. In other words, a target 12 kilometers away with a transversal velocity of 412.56 meters per second will have an angular velocity of exactly your tracking speed. Any faster than that, and your tracking will be awful. But then, what about at your accuracy falloff? Okay, some more quick math. Let's say that your accuracy falloff is 21 kilometers. So your optimal plus falloff is 12 plus 21, or 33 kilometers. Multiply 33,000 meters by 0 0.03438 radians, and you get 1,134.54 meters per second. So, if your target is 33 kilometers away, they can have a much faster transversal velocity and still be within your tracking. You can see why longer distances help with your tracking. Think back to part one and remember how we showed you the difference between transversal velocity and angular velocity. The closer the target is to you, the easier it is for him to maintain a huge angular velocity and the more difficult he'll be to track. But in this example, even though he'll be lots easier to track at 33 kilometers, you must also remember that you will only be doing 50% of your potential damage. Do you remember why? Yep, because you're attacking at your optimal plus falloff range. So a large part of combat mechanics is to balance all the different factors. Get in close and you could use hard hitting short range ammo with fast tracking short range turrets, but get in too close and you may not be able to hit anymore because you can't track them. Switch to a long range turret and ammo and you could try to snipe targets from afar, but then your long range ammo will deal less damage and the tracking on those long range guns may be so poor that if they just get a little bit closer, then suddenly you can't hit them at all anymore. Okay, we're totally out of time again. Besides, for you newer players, that's probably a lot to take in. So feel free to rewind this video and watch it again, and even go back to part one if you need to. If you have any questions, then, as always, feel free to ask me or any other helpful instructor, or even fellow student, in the EVE University chat channels. In part three, we'll actually put all of this info to use in some typical combat scenarios and see how everything works together.